Hello everyone and welcome to Diary of a Ghost Hunter. Finally, I'm Anne Rekovich, this is Renata Daniel. We've got a full episode for you. There are things changing in the paranormal scene. There are changes going on at some big locations and a little bit of drama. And we've got some paranormal lectures coming up, a new location revealed and so much more. Stay with us. Welcome to the Diary of a Ghost Hunter podcast with your frightfully good hosts and paranormal investigators, Anne and Renata. Join the chaos weekly as we tell you what has inspired us, what cases we're investigating, what is driving us round the twist, and the true horror of what goes on in the background of being a ghost hunter. This is a Frightfully Good production. Hello, Anne, and welcome back to the studio, finally, for a... Jeez, oh, a long-awaited, a long-awaited long Diary of a Ghost Hunter. Yeah, it has been a long time. I think the last one we put up was the uh, Irish Museum. Yeah. Um, in when we were back in Ireland, so it's it's been a while. It has been a while. Things have been a bit cray-cray, but here we are. Because uh, we promised we'd come back and here we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have a, a couple of things that um, we thought would be interesting to talk about today. And one of the things is something that I actually found while roaming on the internet. It's called doom scrolling, and, but yep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and uh, it's all about the debunkers that seem to be coming up everywhere when it comes to uh, paranormal investigating and ghost hunters and and there are ho- a whole lot of new debunking channels that are coming up. So you mean people are actually trying to explain what's happening rather than just assuming it's paranormal? Yes. yes. I like it. But I want to know whether it's healthy debunking or whether they are just doing it just because they can put on somebody else's video, sit there and whinge about it. And, well, and make judgment. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, uh, look. I think it uh, holds people accountable for what they're doing, which is really nice. But it's when you're not there at the location at the time, it is really hard to get the full depth of knowledge of what is going on. You can sit back and go, oh, yes, yeah, somebody's off screen doing that. You weren't there. You, um, you need to know that the people you are watching are trustworthy enough that they wouldn't do it. And there, are, there is a couple out there that I would believe they would not do that. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some out there that I would believe would do it, but I don't think you should taint all of us with the same brush. Mm. Mm. Yes. So what do you think? Um, I, I really didn't think much about it until I saw this article in Higgy Pop and, uh, thought that it's a really good idea to talk about. I have been following some of the debunkers lately just because I wanted to see what topics they are bringing to the forefront, what they're putting back into people's interests. And um, that's an interesting subject in itself. But there are a couple uh, in America and in England specifically that sort of I've been following. And some of them are pretty brutal and they have not a lot of good things to say. Well, I mean, I don't mind if they've got things to say, but it's got to be be constructive because otherwise they're just as bad as the people that are running around screaming demon and witches and whatever Mm. all the time. They're just screaming fakers, fakers, without actually examining why it is fake. Yeah. What What is the evidence to prove <clears throat> that is fake? Uh, other than, oh, that's probably somebody doing that. Well, you don't know. You, you've got to prove it. Mm. Is there something in the video that indicates that somebody is doing it? Just because something can be faked does not mean it is faked. Mm. Now, some of the debunkers have been paranormal investigators or still are paranormal investigators. They have been on investigations. They have been to some of the sites that they talk about. Apparently, some of the debunkers may not have been on too many investigations themselves. So that's mm. always a little bit of a worry. You would like yeah. to sort of come from a perspective of at least knowledge and knowing that, um, you know, when you're talking about people... Um, And like you said, not being there on the night, that at least you're kind of talking from an aspect of, I kind of really do know what I'm talking about. Do you have a favourite debunker? Um, I don't want to say 
too many names, but I have been watching a gentleman from England called Beardo, B-E-A-R-D-O. Uh, he has a ton of debunking videos and um, I just, I've watched them um, out of interest and again out of to see what he's bringing up and who he is debunking. He's been pretty well across the board. Uh, there is no one that's kind of not <laughs> been debunked not by him that is not safe. <laughs> He has been talking about the amount of uh, flack that he cops from um, the debunking and that his life is not pleasant because people will uh, email him or message him and uh, tell him what they think of him with regard to that. So I think you've got to have a pretty thick skin to be yeah. a, a debunker. Um, oh, there are some debunkers that you say one nasty word to them, they they cry and run away. Yeah, so it's easy to throw the mud, not easy to take it. But it's it's interesting that this is something, and it's again, it's across the board. It's not just paranormal investigators. It is every one that is trying to make a headway on YouTube or TikTok or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, there is a set of debunkers who are right there the next day or within hours pulling them down. And I'm not sure whether this is a healthy way of doing it because literally they're not the ones that are creating the content in the first place. Mm. They are picking up somebody else's content and... Um, running with it and i'm not saying that that That's is particularly videos. yeah that is particularly i'm not saying that that is particularly wrong but i'm i'm looking at it from the point of view of are they trying to just make their money grab uh, by making somebody else a victim yeah. or are they seriously trying to do something to make the particular field that they are working in um better i like kenny biddle's work are you familiar with and Kenny? He's, yeah, he's been around for yeah, a long time. Yeah, he's been time. a paranormal investigator and he's now joined the Skeptic Society. And uh, he, because he's been an investigator, he understands how the field works, what mm -hmm. the equipment is, what they should be looking for with the equipment. And uh, also with like the table tipping and, and all that sort of stuff, he, he watches for micro movements, he mm -hmm. examines things, he gives really good dialogue as to why he believes this is not true paranormal mm -hmm. paranormal phenomena. Yeah. Do, 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 do. You're waiting for it, I know. And I guess another perspective is, um, I mean, do you bag the team um, in total or do you talk about the way that it has been filmed and put up for consumption? Because they're two different That's things. editing. Yeah, because yeah. if you edit things the right way it's going to look spookier mm -hmm. and maybe that is exactly what those people are trying to do um, so yeah it's it's interesting and I'd like all of you to head on out and have a look at some of the debunkers that are online at the moment and send us in what you think about them send us in your favorite if you follow one um, or send us in one that we should look at to uh, look at the techniques that they use. Yeah, pop it in the comments below on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, you can come over to our Anne and Renata Frightfully Good page or the Frightfully Good family and leave your comments there. All right, next one. What's next? Yes, now talking about debunking and oh, people who have topic. had a so much. I've been wanting to talk about this for oh, weeks, no. but we <laughs> haven't been able to do a, a um, Diary of a Ghost Hunter. Cody and Satori. Oh, Cody yeah. The and darlings Satori. of the paranormal field. Haven't they been in for a beating? They have. An absolute beating. And if you don't know the story, Cory and Satori, Cody, 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 Cody and Satori. Cory and Satori. <laughs> Cody and Satori are a couple who have gotten together and they have this unique ability um, that they found that they were able to produce when they got together and uh, try to bring through uh, uh, like um, connection from the other side. I remember evidence. when it first happened, people were sending us videos going, what do you think? What do you think? Is this real? Oh, my God, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so they, and stand, <laughs> yeah, they stand together, they hold hands, and they ask the spirits to make a noise. And the noise sounds like a tap or a rap or a knock. 
and it's been alleged for those that have been there to witness it that it can come from all areas of the room uh, so there's no specific area or it doesn't sound like there's a specific area that it comes from continuously and that um, this is some sort of like magic oh it's this, magic this is like wow how can this happen uh, that they are doing this and it literally happens every every time every time they get together and they go into this trance where they are holding hands in the middle of a room uh, the spirits sort of want to talk to them the latest thing is that Cody and Satori have been hanging out at the Conjuring House mm -hmm. for quite some time mm -hmm. and just recently I believe that I saw um, in uh, one of the posts that came up on uh, the internet that they are breaking their ties with the Conjuring House because of some of the things that have been happening and that they are sort of going in a little bit of a different direction and, and uh, all the things that you kind of say when you, it just gets too icky uh, and that you have to make a change. So uh, over the last few months, everyone that is anyone has had an, an opinion on Cody and Satori. And they've gone right back on some of the, <coughs> sorry, the earlier videos to see uh, whether this phenomena has happened before. Mm -hmm. And it has. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cody was known for clicking his toe joints or mm -hmm. uh, some sort of joints to make popping sounds mm -hmm. uh, fairly early on. And then it sort of stopped. And now they're together. This noise seems to have appeared again. Mm -hmm. And look, um, in regards to the Conjuring House, it's very interesting because we're actually in the process of attempting to book the Conjuring House ourselves for our Salem, New England <laughs> pun made trip. And uh, Ed's book solid, book solid, and so I'm... much so that they are now offering glamping. Yeah. So if you can't get, 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 it's not it's gamping. G H. Do they put a G H? So it's like camping, but gamping. Okay. Which sounds a little bit like bondage, but you know that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we we did manage to get in for a ninety minute tour mm -hmm. which is great uh for our group but it's booked solid yeah. and the 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 letter that they've put out really casts aspersions doesn't it because mm. they've got new management there and i have to say my experience so far with the management if they've been super helpful they have been responding to my emails and i was wheedling every possible way i could to get us into there for even an hour for an investigation. But sadly, it's not going to work, but we've got our 90 minutes, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've been very professional. And this is what we have to remember. This is a business, but none of us want anything faked. We want to have a true experience. And this is what's sort of coming across, isn't it? If I remember correctly from the... Again, everyone has an opinion and this is where it gets really dicey because people will either like what they are talking about or hate what they are talking about. And so if you're hating on something, you're going to find all of the negatives about it. There are a lot of people coming through that have been saying things to the point of they're even got microphones in rooms and they're making noises oh, through the microphones. And there's stuff in the forest. and um... Yeah. And until we get there and experience it for ourselves, we can't tell you what is true or not. We, we don't know. But just to, to be a little bit of a um, stir the pot, Cody and Satori have been facing a lot of poop being thrown at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this possibly a way of deflect, distract? Oh, look at them. Let's, let's, let's put the attention away from us doing bad things and put it onto someone else. Is that possibly what's going on here? I don't know. They... Or have they had a falling out with these people and don't like them anymore? So let's... Look, I, I don't know that's what's happening. I'm just trying to look at a sort of bit of devil's advocate type of thing mm. as to why people would all of a sudden react like this and put out such a bold statement on a new business. Why, why would they do it? What would they have to gain from it? Mm -hmm. Firstly, to distract from any bad uh, media that they've had. And secondly, they've possibly had a falling out mm -hmm. with this group and let's you know, get a bit of revenge on them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just 
saying possibilities, or thirdly, it truly is going on. And they feel the need to make the community aware. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stop people going. No. Why stop them at all? It's one of those things where, I mean, how many times have we said things about the Warrens? And people still 100% believe that uh, all of that is true. They're godly people. So, you know, you are are not. By impregnating her? (laughs) You are not. Allegedly. That's that's another diary to go, Sutter. They. Oh, um, it's, yeah, it's hard. And the thing is that this new couple have taken over. Um, are people offended that they have actually bought the house? Do they not like these do they, people? Do they not like them? <laughs> uh, and so they're, they're stirring the pot. I don't know. I'm interested in going because we have heard about this place a lot, mm-hmm. obviously. And, you know, you, you will always get those people that no matter what you say about someone, it won't change their mind. Yeah. And then you will have those people who you will say the one thing that you've read online and it will also change their mind. So it's a complicated business when you're dealing with the public. And I also want to um, just pay our respects to the Perron family who uh, the mother died uh, last week. Mm-hmm. So um, she's no longer with us. So it's a it's a time where we need to sort of give them a little bit of space to and uh, acknowledge the fact that they're mourning. So our condolences to the Perrin family for the loss of their mum. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Let's get on to some non-dramatic. Non-gossipy? Non-gossipy, down-to-earth, solid dudes. Yes. Well, we are going down to Melbourne. Uh, Tomorrow. By, by the time you see <laughs> this, uh, we'll probably have been back. Uh, but we are going down to Melbourne to take part in a paranormal event run by APS, the uh, Australian Paranormal Society, uh, with Bill and Amanda Tabone. And um, they uh, have brought into Australia... Uh, a pair of dudes that we met for the first time about 10 years ago when we went to another event yes. run at Q Station. I and bet. That is the Kling Brothers. Now, the Kling Brothers are... Brad uh, and Barry. Uh, yep. Big Texan guys. Larger than life who, personalities. Yes, and larger than life. <laughs> and they have been on quite a number of shows uh, They were most famous for the uh, one called Ghost Lab. Mm. They have the big truck yeah, and, and they go all to their places. equipment. Yeah. So we, 10 years ago, had, um, I think, a three-day event where mm. we could listen to uh, them discuss the things that they have done and the history that uh, they already created doing all of their shows and everything. And it was absolutely fascinating to listen to them. Uh, we did do an investigation with them at that particular point in time as well. And there was a workshop. So they were just talking about... I've got their signature still up on the wall yeah, there, there. So they were talking about some of the ways they investigate. And it's all happening again in Melbourne this time, thanks to uh, Bill Tabone and Amanda. Uh, and um, yes, so we are going to a paranormal lecture at a huge theatre uh, there. In Kilmore, I think And it is. Yeah. Old Kilmore Jail to do oh, yeah, an that's investigation. Right. The, the, the lecture is somewhere Clyde or somewhere near Clyde. I can't remember. But, yeah, it's it's a big, big event. Yeah, it's a big event. So uh, Renata, myself and Cousin Steve are jumping in Rosie, the Tesla, and we're going to drive down there. Renata is so looking forward to it, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we hope to meet uh, a couple of our lovely followers while we're down there as well. So uh, that's going to be awesome. We hope that by the time you see this, we would have possibly had a few lives and um, some recordings done of, well, this of some of the events. So will come out on Friday if I manage to get it edited in time. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, um, yeah, stay tuned. No pressure, leaving s- tomorrow. Stay tuned to <laughs> photos, lives, and uh, maybe some recordings uh, from that whole weekend of shenanigans. So, um, mm. yes, very, very interesting. And we've got coming up as well our Salem New England journey. It's a frightfully good adventure. We've got, uh, well, we've actually had some people reach out to us to see if they could come on the trip because we've changed it up a little bit. Um, But sadly, we are sold out at this stage. We are just working with a very small group and we want to keep it intimate. Uh, And we have got some 
awesome locations that we're going to be investigating. We're going to be going into Salem. We've got a night at the Lizzie Borden house with them all. We're going to investigate all, all through the night. Uh, and there is some ones that we haven't quite locked in yet, but we're hoping to have around about three or four investigations throughout this uh, 10 day event and also we're going to be traveling to different awesome amazing places yeah. throughout the new england area yeah it's it's going to be a hoot yeah, you have to watch out get on the youtube channel yeah. make sure you're subscribed and hopefully next year we're going to be going back to one of our most amazing and beloved places in the world for another little uh frightfully good holiday so a frightfully uh, good haunted holiday yeah watch out for uh tickets and uh, the announcement for that one just got to get this one done yes, first. Yes, oh. abs absolutely. <laughs> but I am, I am really looking forward to it. Uh, I think it's 18 weeks before we go at mm. this stage. Oh. All right. Now, yes, drum and, roll. And I guess our big announcement uh, locally is that we have secured a new site to do some ghost hunting and paranormal uh, exploration in, which I am super, super happy about. And that is Tokal Homestead. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I was blown away when you told me you'd approached them and they'd actually reached out to you and said, yes, let's have a meeting. I'm like, you've been trying for this one for years, years yes. and years. You've just got to get the right people who are open to new ideas uh, like Lindsay, Lindsay House yeah. on uh, what's the a Darling Point in Darling Sydney, Point in Sydney yeah. which is an incredible location, and the volunteers that uh, are working there to maintain the property and keep it beautiful welcomed Renata and um, the rest of the team in to run some tours there, yeah. and it's. There is, there is a room down in the bottom floor I don't like. And she's opening up to us. It, this is such a beautiful thing to see how the house is responding mm. to us being there and how slowly we are just extricating this information, these little stories, and we're getting to um, know the nuances of the spirits that are there and their characters and, and everything that's going on. And this takes time. The very first investigation we did there, which was a trial run, they were saying, like, through the spirit box, the Estes method, who are you? Mm -hmm. What is this thing? What are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like they were having a conversation yep. with us, asking us, why are you here? Yeah. What, what's this all about? So we actually did explain to them that mm -hmm. we're working with the people who are restoring the house and keeping the house, house open to the public. And we are hoping to learn their story directly from them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they love to talk about is cricket. They used to have got a beautiful big backyard there. And the family, it was known, they would play cricket. We didn't know that until we told the volunteers and I went oh yeah they used to have their Sunday picnics and the family would mm -hmm. come out and yeah so like they love their cricket <laughs> yep and they will talk about it obviously no matter even if you try and change the subject mm -hmm. um, but yes Tomica House is our next one uh, we have our first oh, Tokel Homestead. sorry yes Tokel <laughs> sorry Tokel Homestead oh, too many T's <laughs> uh, and um, we are going to be posting a um, a uh, tour date uh, for July very, very shortly because it, that date is coming up. So it's going to be a quick turnaround for the, our first one. But this is also huge because it has connections to Captain Thunderbolt oh. and to, you know, some of the bush ranging history and to the uh, interesting families that lived there at oh, the homestead there as well. Interesting stories, yes. Yeah, so uh, we can't wait to get our hands on that one. And so. I've, I remember because I used to play there at weddings many, many, many years ago. And it was well known that the area was haunted. Mm. So I'm ex very excited to explore it and uh, see if they'll talk to us. Yes, yes. So, yeah, that's kind of Oh, should us. we do a quick update on the jail, Maitland Jail? Okay. All right. Quick update. Nothing's Nothing. happening. <laughs> People keep asking us. Nothing's happening. Um, allegedly, what was going to be happening um, from uh, what has appeared online again is that uh, contractors were coming in to do a 
uh, a look at what was required. Assessment. An assessment. And then they were going to sort of crunch numbers and see what happens after that. Uh, we do not have an opening date. We do not know what that is about. And please, No time soon. Please note that when we know, we will tell you, even if it's 2 a.m. in the morning, I will get online and I will tell you. Um, until then, unfortunately, the, the gates are locked. Yep. Mm. And we miss them. Although we think some of them came to visit us at Parramatta Jail mm -hmm. when we did a col collaborative event with Appy and the team from Appy and Pete. Thank you very much, guys. We had such a fun night. Uh, yeah, we think some of our boys actually came to talk to us. Yeah, yeah. Strange how these things happen. Yep. But that's us for this uh, episode of Diary of a Ghost Hunter. We hope you have enjoyed the stories that we have shared and some of the gossip. If you would like to comment on any of those things, please post them in the comments and we will get back to you. Or if you want us to talk about anything in particular, let us know. All right, that's us. Over and done with. We'll see you next time on Diary of a Ghost Hunter. Bye, Bye. for now. Bye.